Hey everybody, it's Lindsay and I'm back today to share with you how you can make a box and a bow with your envelope punch board. Now if you didn't see the video on Friday, I showed you how you can make these tags to give as a gift. However, I needed a way to present them, so I'm going to go ahead and make a box to hold these. Now I started out on the internet at the Crafty Owls blog and there she has, it's called the Box Buster. And you just input all your little numbers in for your box your width, your height, and your depth. And then she has it all figured out. It does all the math for you and it tells you how big you need your square to be. Mine is eight inches. And I'm using a piece of craft paper here. And then it gives you your first punch and score mark and your second punch and score mark. My first one was two and three quarters. So here you can see I can line that up. Punch and then use my score tool just to make that score mark. And then my second punch was at seven inches. Now your envelope punch board only goes to five inches. So what I did is I have this T-square ruler and it's clear so you can see through it. And I'm just gonna line this first part up right at the five inch mark. And then I can push my paper out all the way to the two inch mark on my ruler which will give me seven inches and I know it's nice and even, nice and straight, exact measurements here. So I can go ahead and punch and then score here and I've got my punch and score mark at seven inches. Now you just wanna flip this and rotate this 90 degrees, line that little piece that comes out from your tool, go ahead and line that up with your score mark there, punch it and score it. Now this doesn't go all the way down, that's okay, I will fix it in a minute but then I'm gonna go ahead and move my paper, line it up at my next score mark, punch and score. Now you can see that this didn't go all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this next punch and score off really quick before I move on to fixing this that didn't go all the way down. My paper hung off and I couldn't complete my score mark, but that's okay. All I need to do is push my paper up, make sure it's lined up against that straight edge at the top of your tool, and then using your score, score tool, you're gonna kind of put it at one of the lines you've already made and then just move it back and forth until you kind of feel it give a little bit and then you can go ahead and finish your score mark here. Now if you go off the paper, it gets a little wonky, that's okay because this is all gonna be on the inside of the box. So if you do any of those lines like you see here, it's gonna be okay, it's all gonna be hidden in the end. So now that I got that done, I can go ahead and flip my paper back around, line that up with that score mark, punch it and score it here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and flip my paper 90 degrees again and line that up with my first score mark, punch and score. And this one again does not completely go all the way through the paper. You can see my paper hangs off the edge, but we'll fix that the exact same way we did the other one. But first we need to go ahead and line this up with this next mark, punch and score here. And then the last thing I need to do is go ahead and finish that one. Now this is a little easier because you've already got the punch on this end so you can see exactly where you need to line it up, easy as can be. And your box template should look like this when it's done or a version of this if you're doing a different size. Now to make this a little bit easier on folding, I'm just gonna go ahead and crease all of my score marks just to make so this folds up nice and easily. Just a back and forth score here, nothing fancy. I'll just go ahead and make sure that these fold very easily because I'm gonna fold my box a little bit differently than you would a normal box. So here you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off all my little creases here. And then for my box, I wanted it to be open on the top. So first of all, I need to go ahead and use some really long scissors. I believe these are eight inches. These are just Fisker scissors. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little chop on each of these little score marks here. So you have your center of your box there at the very center with your two little flaps on the end. And then you have two flaps on both of your other corners and just cut from those flaps straight down to that center line but not through it. So just give four little chops to your box and then you're ready to fold. Now again, I wanted mine to be open on the top. So here's how I did it. I first folded in those two sides and then the part where your box would kind of be open, 
I'm gonna go ahead and tuck those right in on the inside of my box so I don't have a top on it. You can see I'm just tucking that right inside and then I can fold up the other side, tuck in that last flap. And because I did it this way, it really stays nice and secure on its own, but I did go back in and squirt some glossy accents on those flaps, held it for a few seconds, and then held that box all together, and that finished it off. The only thing I need to do now is decorate it. So I'm using the same stamp set on the front of my box as I use for my tags, just to give it a nice cohesive look. I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp out a little scene using the Lawn Fawn Bake With Love stamp set. I already had all of these masks cut out. You can see there's already lots of stamping all over them. So you get lots of use out of your masks if you save them. Here I'll go ahead and I've stamped the flower the little pile of flour, one egg, and then I've stamped this bowl, leaving a little space at the top. I'll mask that off, except for that little round part at the top. I'm stamping the butter as well, and then that little space that I left with no ink is for the spoon, to look as if the spoon is in the bowl. And then, once I'm all done with this, I can remove all of my masks. I'm just gonna add a few little hearts here first to make it look as if it's baked with love <laughs> and then I can remove all of my little masks here and these still work just fine I've already used them about five or six times but they're still sticky so I can stick them right on the back of my stamp set and save them for another time now again I'm carrying these same colors that I used on the tags onto the front of the box as well and I should say I use memento ink for all of my stamping because I'm using alcohol markers to color in all of my images. Now again, like I said, I'm bringing the same colors I used on the tag right onto these images on the front of the box. Not only does this give it a cohesive look, but it really helps just to speed things along when you're creating this gift because you've already got the markers out, you've already got these colors out, you can just color these in right as you make the box as well and it just speeds up the entire process. So I went ahead and I had a flower bag that was red already so I went ahead and colored the bag a flower red as well. I did the bowl the exact same peach colors with a navy stripe and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a wooden spoon and then to speed things even more up I'm gonna go ahead and color that egg and both the flower mound and the flower in the bag all the same colors. So that just carries it across the entire front of this box and it'll really carry the eye across the entire image on the front of the box. The butter is yellow as butter is and then I'm going to color these little hearts red and peach just for a little something different. And that will finish off all the coloring except for just a little bit of shadow on the bottom, nothing fancy just two grays, a darker one and a lighter one to blend it out and that does it for the coloring. And here I will show you in a nice close-up of what it will look like on the front of the box. So now I wanted to make a little red bow for my box but I didn't have any just plain red ribbon. So first I started with a three-quarter inch strip of red cardstock and then I cut that down to eight inches long. I'm going to go ahead and line this up at the four inch mark on my envelope punch board. I'm just going to place that in there, give it a punch, and then I will flip this over and give it another punch on the other side as well, making sure it's lined up at four inches. This is going to, because I pushed it all the way up in there, it's going to give a very thin line, so just be careful when you do this. It can break pretty easily. You could always pull this out just a little bit, and it won't be as such a thin line, and it'll still give you a great bow. I just went ahead and wanted to make sure mine was nice and straight. I also did the same thing on both ends and here is the template you should end up with. Now to make my bow more realistic looking and just a little bit easier to work with, I took my bone folder and kind of ran it along each of these ends of the cardstock and that just breaks up the fiber in the paper and makes it a little curly and easier to bend like you want it to. It makes it more pliable and easier to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little adhesive. This is just double-sided paper adhesive right in the center of this bow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take the backing paper off of that and then place both of these ends down. Now this isn't strong adhesive, so you really wanna go back and squirt some heavy-duty adhesive. You could even use hot glue here 
just to hold this together nice and secure. This was just a nice, quick, easy way for me to get this all together. And then holding that right in the center, I pressed both bow loops up so it kind of fluffed it up a little bit. Now I had a little bit left over here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a tiny strip off of it, give it a little curl with my bone folder as well here. And then using just a little bit of paper adhesive, I'm gonna go ahead and put that right in the center of the bow to cover up both of those ends so nothing ugly is showing here. It covers up all of your ends that would poke out. And then I can just trim this off right on the back so it wraps around to the back and you don't see any of these ends as well. And I'm just using fine detail scissors here so I can get a nice clean sharp cut. Now when you cut your paper down to 8 inches you should have a little bit left over so I just cut that right in half and then I'm going to put these ends right into this punch board punch and give it a nice little punch making sure it's even on both sides and this gives me a little fishtail end for fishtail ends on my bow. Here you can see I can line those up right on the back of the bow and it looks like I have a nice tied bow with fishtail ends on it. So to put this all together, I just put some double-sided adhesive on the back of the stamped panel that I made, and I will just put that right down onto the front of the box. For the bow, I'm gonna use a little bit of foam tape on the back of it, just to give it a little dimension, and then I just put that right in the top right-hand corner of the box, and there you can see my little tags fit right down in there. I can tuck in those strings so they're not hanging out, and this just keeps it all together and gives a nice presentation for these tags to give to someone. I hope you guys really enjoyed these two videos of this box and these tags and also the bow as well. I will leave a link in the description box below for the Crafty Owls Box Buster website so you can make a box of your own if you wish. And as always, I will leave you with a close up of this project and just a few images. information and the supply list you can head to my blog craftingwhilecaffeinated.wordpress.com the link is in the description box below as well as that i in the top right hand corner that will get you there too thank you guys so much for watching today and happy crafting